It is difficult. I, I consider myself to be fairly mentally tough, but there's times where you get the lump in your throat and uh, teary eyes just thinking of how your good friend lived his last few seconds and what was going through his mind. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about Travis Alexander and why he was with this woman, Jody Arias. You know, Travis was just one of the funnest guys uh, you ever got to hang around with. We've been to Hawaii uh, three different times. We've been to Cancun. We've been snowmobiling and just done so many things together. Uh, I just really enjoyed spending time with him. And, you know, quite honestly, we don't know why he was with Jody. None of his friends really clicked with Jody. There were other girls that he, did date, that, he had dated that uh, I think were a lot better suited for him. But for some reason or other, uh, Jody stayed around and, uh, you know, they had a little bit of a secret relationship and it's, you know, come out in the media that uh, it was a little bit secret relationship. And I think he kept it secret because he knew how disappointed his friends would be if uh, we found out he was still dating Jody. All right. Dave, how about this now? This trial, and, and we've seen it already, and we know where the defense is going. They are going after Travis Alexander. They are saying he is someone who is a sexual deviant, someone who was abusing this woman, Jody Arias, someone who was, I guess at the moment of his death, attacking Jody Arias. What do you think of those allegations being made by the defense against your friend? Well, I mean, they're grasping at straws at this point. Uh, there are plenty of girls out there that Travis has dated, short-term and long-term, that are more than happy to give a character witness of Mr. Alexander. Uh, if there was this heated temper, this uncontrollable rage in his life, you know, one of these other girls would have come out but, and said that every single one of them have said he's a complete gentleman, he was a great guy, and uh, this is a tragedy that we can only look at Jody for why it happened. All right, now this is going to be a, a delicate situation here. We know he was, he was a very religious man, devout Mormon, but what we're learning through this case, apparently he had this secret sexual relationship with Jody Arias, and we're learning more about it, and the defense is going to, you know, is going to talk about it. That's, that's the cornerstone of their case here, the recorded phone sex and everything else, these fantasies. Um, what does that... I mean, what, what, what should we take from that? What does that mean? I'm, I'm trying to put this all together. I'm trying to understand Travis Alexander and how this, this was a part of his life also, apparently. You know, 99.9% .9 of Travis's life was lived serving other people, doing good things, inspiring and helping other people. Is there 1%, 0.1% uh, out there that, you know, he might have made a mistake uh, according to his religious beliefs? Yeah, but, you know, every one of us have. And the wonderful thing about our religion is we believe that the Savior atoned for our sins if we repent for them and that there's still a, a way to overcome that natural man through repentance. And Travis would have taken care of those things. Uh, he was a very religious man, but he was also a natural man, and I think the majority of people out there can understand why a guy 30 years old, not married, that has a woman throwing herself at him, trying to seduce him, could slip and make a mistake, and uh, that's, that's not what's on trial here. What's on trial is what Jody did. Absolutely. I, I agree with you, Dave, uh, I, and, I, and I, I'm going to make sure um, that the folks at home are clear that I'm not a attacking Travis Alexander here. He did nothing illegal in my eyes. Um, but I know where the defense is going with this, and I know the, the, the spiritual life that uh, Travis Alexander was leading as well. So there's sort of a conflict there, but we're all just humans, right? Um, Dave, let's talk about Jody Arias, because you got to know her to a certain extent. And you just said something. You said she is throwing herself at him. Did you see this actually happen? Did you talk to Travis Alexander about this? I mean, give us an idea if you, if you have a, a specific instance that you can draw to so we can understand the relationship here because what the defense is telling us is that Travis Alexander is controlling her and is making her do all these things. 
What was the nature of this from your perspective? Good question. I had a lot of late night uh, conversations with Travis. We shared a lot of details that uh, quite honestly uh, you would only share with some very close friends. And Travis's relationship with Jody was different than any girl he had ever dated. And he, he admitted to me that she wasn't marriage material. She wasn't the future Mrs. Alexander. She wasn't someone that would ever be the mother of his children. But his weakness was the physical attraction because it came so easily. And he did not respect her because Jody didn't respect herself. He didn't want a long-term life with her. She satisfied a short gratification for a short period of time. And when he wanted to get past that, he wanted to get past this relationship, he insisted that she move hundreds of miles away so that there wasn't that quick access to sparking that relationship back up. And unfortunately, those hundreds of miles was not a big enough barrier because Jody just simply made the trek back to Travis's house and unfortunately he succumbed to the natural man which shows he wanted to spend a little bit of time with her. Dave, did, did you witness her throwing herself at him? I mean I've heard stories about you know and we heard some testimony about it her crawling through the doggy door to get into his house I mean was it to the point that she would show up in his house without an invitation? Did you, uh, you know, maybe you're with Travis at some point and she just shows up? I mean, any specific instant like that that you were able to witness or hear about? You know, I was never there to witness her crawling through the doggy door to get into his house, but he did tell me of some of their relationship challenges that resulted from her showing up at his house unannounced in the middle of the night and just um, showing up in his bed. Travis was a very sharp dresser and he had some very nice suits and after his family has picked through the things they wanted to remember him they gave me some of his dress suits that were all custom made to him and he had his name embroidered on the inside of each of them and so I just simply had a tailor embroider it above it in memory of so that uh, every time I put them on I think of my buddy Travis.